Hey, what's up everyone? Vegetarian Zombie here, and I want to welcome you back to Beginning C Sharp with Unity video tutorial series. In this episode, we'll be reviewing everything that we covered in this section, and then I'll outline what we'll be doing in the next section. But, of course, before we do that, we're going to look at the task that I assigned you in the last video. In the last video, I want you to take the code that you wrote in previous looping videos and convert it to a while loop. For instance, right now, it's currently in a, using a for each loop. Let's change that to use while. Okay, here you can see I have mono develop open. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create a new increment variable. We'll just call this name increment, like so. And we're going to set this to zero. Next, what we're going to do is create a while loop. So we'll do the while like this. And we'll say name increment is less than we'll do names.length. And we'll put an opening brace here and a closing brace here. Next, we'll simply append our name to the existing names. So we'll do existing names plus equals, and then we'll do names like so, and we're gonna pass in the name increment. And then we'll append a space to it so the names aren't all crushed together. Okay. And that's it. Really nice and simple. Now what we'll do is to make the logs clean, we'll select these, and what we'll do is hit command forward slash, or what you can do is hit control forward slash if you are on a PC. All right, I'm gonna save this, and I'm gonna switch back to Unity here. I'm gonna stop this, and let's, we have our scores here, and you can see we have our names here. Let's clear this out, and let's start our project once again. What I'll do now is move up here and we'll deselect the cube. And we have a problem. Okay, we are all reset. Now what I'll do here in my while loop, I'll put name increment plus equals one like so. Now this should work. I'm gonna switch back to Unity and we'll run this again. Now in my hierarchy, I'm gonna select my cube and I'm gonna uncheck this checkbox. And there we have existing names, Fred, Mike, and Sam. And that's all you need to do. Okay, in this part, we're gonna review everything that we covered in this section. And as you know, this section was titled Control Flow, meaning we were changing the way how the, how the flow of the code ran based on certain values. The first thing we did with that was using conditionals. And a conditional is simply an if statement. We check to see if a value was reached a certain threshold or was underneath a certain threshold or, or was equal to that threshold, and we made choices based after, off of that. In the if statements we had, we could do an if, and then we could provide even an else if, and then if that didn't work, we could even just do a simple else. So if statements are very powerful and you're gonna be using them all over the place. And this will allow your game to, to change and adapt to what the player is actually doing. Next, I showed you the ternary operator. And the ternary operator was just simply taking an if statement and really, really just making it into a single operation that you can add onto one line. And a lot of people I know use ternary operators. Myself, I kind of just like to go with the old flow of if statements but they do make your code compact and concise. After the ternary operator, I showed you switch statements, and switch statements are very much like if statements. They allow us to make choices based on a certain value that is presented to it. Not surprisingly, switch statements are actually optimized to be faster than if statements, but really, I've never gone about and made a choice whether to go with an if statement or a switch statement based on performance, I think when you're at that level where a switch statement is preferred to get that little bit of extra speed into your program, then I think you're into some really high performance computing. You're doing some really major stuff. But for most of the time, if statements are perfect, they'll do exactly what you need them to do. And switch statements also have that danger of accidental fall through. If you don't specify a break, then what will happen is you'll just run through all of the various different cases, thus incorporating errors into your program. 
After we covered switch statements, I introduce you to constants and enumerations. Constants are useful if you need values that don't change, and enumerations are a way to give a predefined set of values that a person can select or that you can use within your code that are also readable and make your code, yeah, just easier to understand. After constants and enumerations, we dived into loops, and the first loop is the for loop. You learned how you can initialize the loop and how to check when a loop will continue its progress. For loops are pretty useful and you'll be using them again all over the place. And with a for loop, we also have the for each loop, which is excellent for working with collections. You don't have to do all the management of the loop itself. The for each loop does that for you and then you can just iterate through your various arrays and the for each loop will provide you that element of that array without you having to do much work at all. And last but not least, with the for each loop and the for loop, we have the do while loop. The while loop itself was a way to do a loop if a certain condition is true, while the do while loop performed the one iteration of the loop itself before evaluating whether to continue or not. For the most part, you're going to be using a while loop. But the do while loop is there for you in case you need to run that first iteration of that loop. Believe it or not, at this point, you have all the knowledge necessary to make a game. Now, granted, you may not feel like it, and the game you make will probably not be pretty, but you have all the tools to actually create a game itself in Unity. But there's a lot more to cover, and the big one is object-oriented programming. If you're new to object-oriented programming, have no fear. We're going to be taking it one step at a time. In this section, I'm calling beginning object-oriented programming. The first topic we'll cover are structs. Structs is your first basic object. Now, a lot of tutorials will start you off with the class, and we'll be covering classes in a bit later. But it's really important you understand how to work with structs because structs are often overlooked data structures and provides the benefits of classes while also being a value type. You'll learn about that later, the difference between value types and reference types. But for now, you'll be introduced to structs. Next, we'll cover access control. And this is going to be a very short video. You'll learn how you can allow people to access your objects. Then we'll cover methods. Methods are a way to allow your objects to do something. If an object is a noun, the method is the verb. So you can say dog run or boy sleep or something like that. Then we'll be covering fields and properties and you'll see how they work with methods and more specifically how they work with access control. Properties are great because they take a lot of the boilerplate code that we write and just do it for us. Then we'll learn about constructors, what it means to create constructors for our objects. And interfaces is a way to give behavior to objects that aren't related to each other. And next I'll be covering interfaces. Interfaces allow you to give two different types of objects similar behavior. And finally, we're going to close out this section with a short discussion on polymorphism. Polymorphism is one of these impressive words that conjures up complexity and so forth. But the idea behind it is actually relatively easy to understand. And in this video, you're going to learn about what polymorphism is and how you can leverage it inside your code. Now, all this is a little bit, may seem a little bit complicated, but it's actually a way of thinking about your code. Instead of working with code as just a series of instructions, you start applying metaphors to them. You start assigning blocks of your code just an idea of what it does and what it functions. And then you play around with these blocks. You play around with these objects that, are, that basically interact with each other. And your code itself begins to feel organic. And really, it it's, becomes much more easier to understand what is going on. All right, well, that's the end of this video. And like I said, in the next video, we'll start diving into object-oriented programming. So get some sleep, rest up, and in the next episode, we're going to dive in deep.
As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment. And if you've liked these videos, feel free to press that thumbs up button below. All right, everyone. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video. See you then.